Well, hello and welcome to my channel. Finally, that day has come, guys. I decided to take a video entirely in English on how I started learning English and how I constantly improved my vocabulary and my pronunciation. So in this video, I'm not going to use a single Turkish word, but I'm going to put subtitles right here so that you can follow what I'm saying both in English and in Turkish. First of all, how is everybody? I hope you guys are having a great new year and I hope everybody has great resolutions for this year as well because I have some that I really want to stick to until the end of the year. But let's see how things will be in the near future. So how I started learning English was basically most of you guys already know that I was born and raised in Germany. So starting at day one, I was already raised bilingual because of the fact that both my parents are Turkish, but I was born in Germany. So at home, we used to speak Turkish, but when I started going to the kindergarten, I started speaking German a lot more than Turkish. So that's basically me being bilingual because of the fact that I was raised between two cultures. At the age of four, which is very interesting for a child, I started counting in English. People in my household used to count in German or in Turkish, but I uh, counted things in English. Because I, to me, it was very fascinating to know another language than other people. You know, it made me feel a little bit smarter. And I had an ego. So I was a very, very... I've had a lot of negative experiences throughout my childhood. But having a big ego was not one of them. Well, that made me feel actually a little bit superior to others because I felt like, wow, I'm better even though I'm just a small puppy. But people look up to me because I speak in another language. So I kind of like wanted to keep doing that. I wanted to become better at the age of four where you're actually just supposed to think about playing around and, you know, smashing things and crying and stuff. So my parents got divorced before I turned one year old. So I stayed with my dad and my grandparents and my grandpa taught me how to read the Quran properly at the age of six. I didn't learn Arabic but I learned how to read it and my grandpa really showed me how to pronounce the letters of the Arabic alphabet, how to pronounce them properly, right? It was really interesting to me to see another language, another way of pronouncing things. It was fascinating. I was very curious at that time. I knew how to read Arabic by the age of six and obviously I knew how to speak German and Turkish. So that's basically knowing three entirely different language pronunciations by the age of six. When I started going to school, I was already very interested in English because the language itself was mesmerizing. I loved the way it sounded. In addition to that, my dad had a CD player, which I used to listen to music with, but we only had one CD and that CD was not even an album. It was just one song and that song was Where is the Love by the Black Eyed Peas. And I just loved that song. I just loved the way it sounded. I didn't, obviously I didn't understand anything I was listening to. I got very curious and we had this new computer in our room. It was like, you know, these big things, like this big white monitor everybody had in his room back in the 2006 and 7s. Firstly, I tried to listen to the song and write down the lyrics that I understood, but some words that I didn't understand. I just tried to look up the lyrics at one point with the computer that we had, you know, kind of getting used to the internet. And I found the lyrics and I kept singing the song by myself and I realized that I like rap a lot. I like hip-hop a lot. I knew this song by heart by the age of nine. I also found other songs that I could listen to because I, I was, you know, I grew up with hip-hop. It's just, you know, it was always my passion. I listened to the Black Eyed Peas, obviously. I listened to Eminem. I listened to Tupac. I listened to 50 Cent. He was popular at that time. As a regular, standard, normal child, I used to watch a lot of TV series for children. We had this channel called Nickelodeon. I don't know if you guys in Turkey know it, but we had it in Germany. It was an American channel, actually, but we uh, had all the American TV series for children dubbed in German. And I couldn't wait to see the new episodes of the series, right? So uh, what I did was, instead of watching all those series in German, I tried to find all the series that I was watching on the internet in English. Because in America, the new episodes aired way before they did in Germany. So I wanted to be quicker than my friends. Like, I wanted to tell them what was going on in the next episode. And spoiler alert, I used to give a lot of spoilers and people hated me because of that. <laughs> Do I care? I think not. Anyways, 
listening to English all the time and trying to focus on how people from different countries pronounce words, how they use the sentences, how they uh, express themselves in general. It was just amazing for me to see all those differences. And I quickly realized that not only does the language change, but also the way people behave and the way people express themselves. So it was not only a matter of how can I translate this Turkish sentence or this German sentence, but it was more like how would an American or an English guy say that? I mean, would he even say that Turkish sentence? What I'm trying to say is it's not only the language it's also the language culture that differs so let's say in Turkey where somebody grew up in a rural area would do this right here in America nobody would do that nobody knows even what that means you know not only the body language but also uh, the way people uh, decide to express themselves no man you can't just translate it like that you just perish the thought you have to think differently stop thinking in a particular language and then try to translate it somehow just try to think in that culture in that language in that behavior in that mannerism I didn't realize I dropped this I hope the sound quality doesn't suck so what I'm trying to say is I kept practicing. I kept listening and repeating and trying to understand. And I'm not talking about once a week or once a month. I'm talking about everyday practicing. To me, it was a lot of fun. I really had fun doing that. It was a hobby. So I used to speak Turkish with my parents, German with my friends, and English to myself. And what I really want to put emphasis on is that I didn't leave the country between the ages of 4 and 15. So I had no opportunity. I had no chance to speak to foreigners because I grew up in a small city we didn't have any tourists we didn't have any students from abroad and no Germans or Turkish people would ever talk to me in English because they thought it was weird and I felt weird but I did it anyway so <laughs> and also prior to every English lesson we had in school I used to take out my book and I went through all the possible sentences that we might be talking about in the next lesson and I read them out loud pronouncing them and repronouncing them and trying to you know replicate everything we might be doing in that lesson so that I could be the best in class as you can see I still had that ego but I had one major problem and that was my English teacher because she was just a fan of British English and I just you know I grew up with American English everything I listened to and everything I watched and everything I tried to pronounce and understand was American English I mean as most of you guys know there are some differences between the British English and the American English and I also have videos where I'm explaining the differences which you can watch right here so my English teacher got really mad at me because apart from the fact that we pronounced words differently we also spelled words differently let's say when I spelled color I used to spell it c-o-l-o-r whereas she spelled it c-o-l-o-u-r the same thing with harbor or some words like organize I would spell it with a z but she would spell it with an s which is the correct way in British English but still to me it was not a mistake because that's how I grew up she got really mad at me and she always accused me saying that I was trying too hard to sound like an American even though I wasn't trying anything at all it was just my normal way of speaking the usual way of expressing myself and I didn't come to the point of realization where I thought I have to change it because I didn't have to because you have 350 million people in America speaking that language so what are you talking about calm down but she didn't we had a lot of fights over that but I'm gonna be honest with you guys I didn't read too many books actually but I used to memorize everything that we had in our English books in school because as I said, I always wanted to be the best, which is probably because of my zodiac sign, because I'm a Capricorn. And the very first time I've been to an English speaking country was in 2016. I've been to London for one day and that was very funny because it came out of the blue. This is how it happened. I was sitting at a cafe with a friend talking about nonsense and he told me how he visited his cousin in London and he said it was super cheap. So I started wondering how cheap it was and I realized that I could buy a ticket round trip to London for only 13 euros, which is nothing. So I've been to London for only a day. I think it was Stansted Airport, was outside the city. I had to take the bus, which cost me 15 pounds. So the bus was more expensive than the plane, which is funny. And then in 2017, I've been to the United States the very first time and I was super excited because I felt like I'm going home for some reason even though I've never been there before but somehow I felt that way and I spent six weeks in America in different 
states and different cities. I've been to a couple of places in Florida, such as Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and then I've been to New York City. I've been to Vegas, Nevada. I've been to El Paso, to Albuquerque, Phoenix, and Sedona. Quite an astonishing journey and then I came back to Germany got my college degree and moved to Turkey and here I am now on YouTube trying to share with you guys all the things I learned all the things I know and all the experiences that I've had on my journey and therefore this is not the last time you will hear me saying Merhaba arkadaşlar and welcome to my channel